Lift me up, son. Praise the Lord. Lord, we come before you and we thank you for the service you've given us. Lord, we thank you for being here. Father, don't leave us alone, man. We thank you that your spirit is here. We thank you. Lord, we, we thank you for all that you've done so far, but we ask that you'll continue to abide with us. And Lord, we ask that you'll be with us as he delivers a message that you've given him that some lost soul that's here tonight tonight might be saved. And Lord, that we might draw closer to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We might be more like you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. And we pray these things. Oh, yes, yeah, we pray. Name. We pray again. So pray again. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all those other times that we prayed before Dad took to the pulpit, or before he began to break the bread of life. And Lord, not one time can I think of that you haven't been here. And you haven't blessed and you haven't helped. And Lord, through the years we've seen lives changed. You've seen souls saved, not anything that we done, but for your mercy and your grace and your love working through us. So, Lord, it's not any, it's not a hard thing for me to believe that you're going to be here. I, I want to have a mind like Jesus. Lord, I want to thank you that you've heard me before I even ask. Lord, I thank you that you're going to be here tonight. And I thank you that, that we're going to see the, the effects of, of your spirit on this service tonight. We thank you, Lord, that you've heard us. And, and thank you for the privilege to pray. And we pray these things in your precious and holy name. We count it a privilege to call yeah. the Lord. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Jesus, holy Amen. The only Amen. name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 I love you. Praise the Lord. Glad for Jesus, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Praise hallelujah. The Praise the Lord. Come on, Eddie. Boy, I want you to stay much in prayer that I put this together the way the Lord wants it. Yeah. If I could have preached about 4 o'clock this evening, I'd have been all right. But as time went on, I tell you, I begin to worry. Uh, I want to preach with the humbleness uh, that, that God, me and some folks was talking here not too long ago, and they was talking about this certain individual said, seem like he... Uh, don't sing as good as he used to or, or you know to all the people that he sung over the years it seemed like he don't have the effect effectiveness that he once had and I said well I know one thing when we start when you see a lot of these people these professionals they start out and uh, boy they're humble and they're serious about what they do but after people begins to brag on them and lift them up it kind of goes their head and they think that they're doing it in their own power and in their own might. And, and you know what? It, it turns from singing unto God to singing, uh, look at me and look how good I am and what I'm doing. What I tell you what I, I, I want to preach and I want to realize my littleness in, uh, in the Lord and how unworthy I am to be preaching the Word and uh, that He counted me faithful to preach the Word. Well, I want you to turn to the 45th chapter of Genesis. You want to read there? Might be reading over in Thessalonians, but I want to read out of John chapter 14. Now, like I said, I want you to pray that I would be able to put this together. It's going to be a blessing for me if I can put this thing together, and I'm going to enjoy it if I can uh, uh, give it to you the way that the Lord had laid it upon my heart something a message that I'd never preached before another one of those things that I hadn't noticed before but today when I noticed it Barbara and the Lord revealed it unto me I want to go Woo! yes sir re, and I, I'm glad for the Lord and glad that he's able to do uh, abundantly above all that we ask 45th chapter of Genesis give you a minute to go there Glad to be an old-time Christian, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Glad to be an old-time Christian. 45th chapter. When you find it, say amen. amen. Sound like about everybody's family. All right, 45th chapter and verse 19. I want you to pay close attention. I'm going to read verse 19 and verse 27. The Bible said here, said, Now thou art commanded, this do ye, Take your wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Listen to me. That's Pharaoh talking there. Pharaoh said to these people, he said, Now thou art commanded, this do ye, take your wagons out of the land of Egypt 
pour your little ones and pour your wives and bring your father and come. And verse 27, and they told him, they was talking to uh, Jacob and they were uh, Joseph's father, Abraham's son, or Isaac's son, and said, and they told him all the words of Joseph which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Now listen. Oh, boys. <laughs> Pray real hard. I'm excited about this, but I'm a nervous wreck. Pharaoh said, Now thou art commanded this do ye. Take your wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. And they told Isaac, said they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Listen to me. Now let's go over to St. John, if you would, and look there for just a minute. The Bible said in verse chapter 14 of St. John, and the Bible said there in verse 15 of chapter 14, said, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because what? It seeth him not, neither knoweth him. Keep praying, keep staying with me. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you, and will not leave you comfortless. I will come, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know me, I know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. And he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Amen. Now, let me get started. And you pray real hard. If I go, if you don't pray, and if I don't be led of the Lord, I'll have you here till midnight. I'd like to go back and give you a lot of, of uh, history of Joseph and I, I'll try not to do that. I don't think that that's needful in order to get this message across. And I'd like to give you uh, 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 some background on Isaac and uh, uh, on Jacob, but I, I won't do that. But just pray that I'll be led of the Lord. Yeah. Now, we're Protestants, and uh, you young Christians might not understand. You hear a lot about Catholics and Protestants and different beliefs. Now we being Baptists, by the way, we're Christians, and Christians are, are uh, classified with the Protestants, and the young Christians might not understand about, well, really, what is Protestants? Well, Protestants started out is and supposed to still be, and Lord touch Kinky and be with him. And uh, I know one thing that, that we sometimes we've left the mark that we were supposed to be on. But anyway, Protestants was started to believe in the resurrection, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The Protestants also believe in the Trinity. You say you young Christians or, or younger ones might say what the Trinity is. The Trinity meaning three. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now as I was growing up, I remember the old saints would stand and testify they would say that they was glad that they're saved, glad that they knew God. But I remember many of them standing, and my grandmother was one that would say this. She would stand and say, I thank God that I have the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Oh, Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'll pray the Father that He'd send you another comforter, that which would lead you into all truth and righteousness. Church, I'm glad I saw the wagon. Praise the Lord forever. I'm glad that I experienced the 
carpenter, praise the Lord forever. That's where, listen, that's where a lot of people messes up. If that we don't stay long enough to get the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Now a lot of Baptist churches don't believe that. A lot of preachers will stand and read out the Bible and the Bible will plainly say Holy Ghost. They're even scared to read it. They'll say the Holy Spirit. But I'm glad for the Spirit of God. But I'm also glad for the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, that Jesus Christ went and prayed before God. And He said, God, I'm leaving my people and they're going to need some help. I think what they need is a third part of the Trinity to go back to the earth to lead them and to guide them and direct them. That which they can see for a life that will guide them to a dark world that they can see the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. So I'm thankful to say and if I fail, this is one of my failures for not expressing the need of the Holy Ghost in our lives and for us to reverence and respect the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible said this is for a reason. There is a reason that the Bible written this and to show you the importance of the Holy Ghost. There's not a sin that man has ever committed or a man could ever commit that God would not forgive except for one. For you young Christians, you know what the Bible said? That sin that cannot be forgiven is to blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. What does that mean, preacher? That means to say it's not real. That means to say that it's not needed. That means to say that it's a not of God. That's blasphemy. Yes. I've seen preachers, and I'm laying a foundation for my message tonight. I've seen preachers that would stand. I'm talking about anointed preachers that had preached. I know one individual that had preached for years. One time took the liberty upon himself. Lee, this is serious business. To stand and say that the Holy Ghost was of the devil. You know what happened to that preacher? He dried up like a prune and he was never anointed again. I've seen churches stand, take a stand against the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God never moved in them no more and they never seen people say, Lord, the Bible said only one sin that would not be forgiven of man was to blaspheme over the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was sent to direct us. The Holy Ghost was sent to comfort us. The Holy Ghost was sent to renew us. The Holy Ghost was sent to give light in our path that we may be able to make it to the kingdom of God. We cannot make it in our own power. We cannot make it in our own strength. But Jesus was talking here in the Gospel of St. John. He said the world cannot know Him. No sirree. How do we know the Holy Ghost? And how do we know the Spirit of God? We must be first acquainted with Jesus Christ in order to know the Holy Ghost. Amen, preacher! Still ain't got my foot in court yet. And I still got to lay blocks in order to build this house. But anyway, listen to me. There, there's a time in our life why it's in, it important for the Holy Ghost to come. Jesus oh. saw it was important, very important, or he wouldn't have seen it. And therefore, why is the Holy Ghost important? Because it is part of the three. Yes, sir, read the Trinity in which we believe, in which the Word of God was written. It is part of the Godhead. Yes, sir, read the body of Christ, the Holy Ghost, is important. It's a lifeblood for me and you. And Jesus knew that he was leaving 
and his people was troubled, said Jesus, while you was here, said that we had to, we followed you. If we had sick children, if we doubted, we came to you. And you increased our faith. You gave us strength for the journey. Yes, sir, you supplied our every need. Oh, he said, boys, I got to leave you. They said, what are we going to do? And Jesus said, I'm getting ready to pray. And I'm going to pray the Father that he would send you another comforter that which would lead you and guide you in all truth and righteousness. Now, I don't know if you young ones have heard this before, but anyway, and uh, before there was a lot of heat in the house, uh, somebody was talking last week about when they had pot belly stoves. And if you got had a pot belly stove or a fireplace as your only source of heat, those that was in front of the stove or in front of the fireplace was the ones that got to warm us. Yes, sir. Well, you get the front side warm, and yeah, the back side was freezing. You turn around and get the back side warm. By the time you got it warm, the, oh, listen to me. The front side was cold again. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray the Father that he'd send you another comforter, that which would lead you and guide you. Mama would make the bed. She'd put the sheet on. She'd put the quilt. She'd put the blanket. But down at the end of the table, at the end of the bed, she would lay a comforter. Boys, when things got real cold, when things got real bad, reach down and pull that comforter up over you. So it'll keep you warm. When everything else failed, it'll keep you warm. Praise oh, the Lord. Yeah. Think yeah. I might have the foundation. You look back in the ages of time we read to you there about. And as I said, keep in mind, listen, if we don't recognize the Holy Ghost and recognize the Comforter, we're going to lose sight of the kingdom. Praise the Lord forever. Because that's our form of transportation to get to heaven. That's your only source of hope, Zach, to get to heaven. It's the Holy Ghost of God living and abiding like he said here in St. John. It in us and us in it. Praise the Lord forever. If you remember back in the book of Genesis, and the Lord would help me to remember, not use too much, but use all that I need. The Bible said Joseph, being 17 years old, he had went out and said he was uh, he was his daddy's favorite. Oh. He had went out and he was and, and, and uh, being his his daddy's favorite, you Bible readers will know. That in order he showed his favoritism above all ten other sons that he had, he and Jacob showed him favoritism. He made him a coat of many colors. Yes, sir. He, a lot of folks listen. It made it made his brethren angry. It made his brethren jealous. But boys. That was a sign of blessing. That was a sign of the oh, world. Listen to me. God ain't going to put his Holy Ghost in just anybody but those that he loves and those that love him. If you'll study Joseph, Joseph had a love for Jacob like the other ten sons didn't have. Listen to me. But he made him a coat of many colors and it fell upon the day that Jacob had told Joseph, said, I want you to go down and search out your brother. And I believe the Bible said that they was in Shechem. They was minding the flock there. He went down into Shechem and he got down there. Oh, I can't wait, listen, to get to the end of this. I'll tell you what, I love the Word of God. It's brand new. And me saying, boy, God's new. And it's my, it's my desire and it's my intention to stay brand new as you of the church. Here in a couple of weeks, I'll be celebrating my 15th anniversary here at the church. And I know I've got born to some because some could measure up to the Word of God. But it's my intention to stay brand new, stay motivated, stay energized, that it would bring the Word of God alive to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So 
Ghost of yeah. being 17 years old. And I, and like I said, I want you to pray. This message, I can get on the wrong track and mess the whole thing up. But the Bible said Joseph, being 17 years old, said he went down and he let, uh, went out of the house, went down, and I, I forget how far the journey was, uh, but he went down and began to seek out his brethren. And his brethren was taking care of the flock of their father. Lord. And as he went down, he was wandering around in a field and said that this stranger came up to him, recognized that he was lost, recognized that he didn't know where he was Lord. at, and asked him what his business was. Then yeah. Joseph told him, he said, my father Jacob has sent me down. I'm a Hebrew, and he sent me down to check on my brethren. Listen to me. Before this happened, I preached one time, you want people to start disliking you? You know why a lot of people, listen, wants to get uh, 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 neutral in the Lord's work? Ronnie, you know why a lot of people wants to get, and I can't think of the word, uh, that I'm wanting to complacent. Uh, you know why people wants to get lazy? Listen to me. There's a fight that we got to yeah. fight. Lord. There's a battle. Listen. Yeah. And you know what? If you step out and, and, and you try to do something for God, Lord. you can expect a battle. Lord. Yes, sir. Lord. But I'll tell you what, if you step out, yeah. you got to help. Lord. He said he wouldn't leave us comfortless. Lord. And you know what? Lord. When the Lord starts to move, you you know, I, I experienced this, sad to say, not by all, but some, some of my preacher buddies, and I thought that I was good friends with, when I started preaching, and the Lord started blessing me, they got jealous of me, oh, God have mercy, shame on us as preachers. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Slow down. Joseph had dreamed a couple of dreams. He had dreamed about his brethren, and then he had dreamed not only about his brethren, but his mom and dad. And he began to tell them in a short version that he was going to rise up, God was going to exalt him. They didn't understand that. They couldn't understand it. You can read it later. I don't want to stay here and waste my time. I won't be wasting my time, but I want to move on to where God's leading me to. Oh, but listen to me. I said that uh, Daddy went out, and when his brother saw him coming before he saw them, oh, yeah. his brother oh, said, here comes a dreamer. Yes, yeah. sir, we uh, they didn't say, here comes Bubby. And you know how the baby always is with the family. And everybody wants to hold the baby. And everybody wants to play with the baby. But Kinky, in this situation, it was different. God was using the baby. And the old, oh, bless the Lord forever. I'll tell you older Christians, if you ain't going to let God use you, God will take some of these young ones and raise them up and make you look like a candle the side of bonfire. Praise the Lord, baby. And no devil will try to make you jealous of them. Well, bless the Lord, baby. Good preaching, preacher. That is good preaching. Praise the Lord. Good message, Joseph got down there. Maybe, I don't know, the Bible don't say it. But maybe the Lord had already tried to speak to Re Reuben and some of the other and, yeah. and tried to get them to, to listen to him. And there was a job that needed done. There was a famine coming up. Yeah. And God wanted to bless his people oh, as yeah. he had promised Abraham, yeah. Ronnie, that he was yeah. going to multiply his seed, yeah. that he was going to preserve them. Yeah. But anyway, oh, at this time, I'll just say that Joseph was the only one that God could get his attention. And thank you, Betty. And Whitney said last Sunday night I made her thirstier than she don't know what. Praise the Lord. I was hoping Betty would. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Hey, some even went on the floor. But, anyways, uh, Joseph got down there. They said, Here comes the dreamer. Well, they devised a plot to stop him. Yes, sir. 
the devil's trying to be stopping us ever since this thing started. He tried to stop our leader. He tried to defeat our leader. And he couldn't stop him. And he's going to try to stop us. No matter how long time goes on, the devil is out to do his job. And we've got to get that frame of mind that we're going to do ours. They devised a plot that they would kill Joseph. Jordan. One of the brethren said, boys, let's don't do that. Okay. Said there's a pit over here that somebody has dug and said, let's throw him down that pit. This is for the younger Christians or, and the older ones too that has forgot about this and maybe ain't even read it yet. God help you. But anyway, he said he dug that, they, they threw him down that pit. First they stripped him of his coat. Yeah. Boy, they wanted to do away with that coat. They couldn't stand that coat. No siree. It wasn't because it had many collars on it. I heard somebody say one time it was ugly. No, it was sought after. Yes siree. That was, and I like to preach on that thing. That was the first thing that they tried to destroy was, oh listen, that's what the devil tries to do. He tries to strip us of our raiment, of our coat, and I ain't talking physically. Boy, that coat of righteousness, that cloak of righteousness that God blessed us with, the devil wants to steal our coat. But I ain't stopping there. I found something better today. Well, the Bible said him being 17 years old was thrown into a pit Finally, there was a bunch of uh, gypsies, a bunch of horse trainers, Ishmaelites come by. They pulled him back up out of the pit and sold him for, I believe the Bible said, 20 pieces of silver or something to that the fact that ain't my message either. They sold him. These girls is enjoying that. I appreciate that. But anyway, said they sold him out. Now you think, what kind of a damper would that put on your spirit? Boy, I tell you what, you've got to have a walk and experience with God in order to make it. Boy, if you're just doing it, as I said this morning, cause somebody else is doing it, you ain't going to make half the trip. Praise the Lord. But if you want to make it to the kingdom of God, you've got to be persuaded. Neither heights, depths, principalities, powers, things present, nor things to come can separate me from the love of God. Get my breath. And he said, Ed said, she think I'm going to knock over one of these days. What a better way to go. Ain't no better way to go. If I got to go, I hope I die preaching. Praise the Lord. But anyways, said that they took him up and they sold him for 20 pieces. Now, he already, he told his brethren, said, I dreamed this dream. Yeah. Jo Joseph had an experience with God, and it's a good thing that he had. Yeah. Yes, sir, he had ten brethren there. Now, a couple of them, they didn't want to kill him, but the others did. Yeah. But listen, what kind of a damper would that be? Would that put on your spirit? Oh. That's your own brother sold you out. Yeah. That's your own brother betrayed you. Boy, he had to have an experience with God and he ordered to keep 17 years old. Yes, sir. He, my daddy, and I've heard of others. My daddy, listen, went from, was not from pillar to post when he was growing up. When him and mama got married, he, or not when him and mama got married, when, when he left home and went out and got him a job, he had all that he possessed in life. Being a 20 year old, 18 or 20 year old man in a shoebox. Listen to me. He didn't have much, but you know what? God blessed him. Praise the Lord. The psalmist said I was young. Now I'm old. Now I've never seen a righteous forsaken. Lord, seat begging bread. Listen to me. But Joseph had a relationship with God. And as he left there, and I can imagine, I preached one time. I, 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 the Lord carried me away one night. I got carried away in the spirit, Betty. And I, I was looking at old Joseph. Can't you imagine the feeling? I know, Betty, that you've testified many times that you grew up in an orphanage and in foster homes uh, desiring somebody to love you. But can you imagine, Ronnie, as, as those Ishmaelites uh, probably put a rope or, or some kind of shackle around yeah. Joseph uh, and yeah. the 
again to lead him away, yeah. look back at his brother yeah. and see oh, no brother. remorse whatsoever. Yeah. He is unblood. You talking about a oh. broken heart? Yeah. Oh, listen oh. to me. I'll tell you one Saturday night, Clifford, the Word of God said that the Son of God came to his own oh. and his own received him not. Oh. But I'll tell you one better than that. That said to as many as received, received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Praise the Lord. That makes me want to take on the bully of the town. I'll bust you right in a kiss. <laughs> Joseph had a broken heart, but he had a vision. The vision was passed down from his father and his grandfather. And I ain't there yet. Just framing up the walls now. Probably just got the base plates on the cinder blocks here. But anyway, said he went down. He ended up and God blessed him. He ended up in Potiphar's house. And you know what happened there? He was falsely accused there. He ended up in prison. But God, but God, listen to me. No wonder he said, he said, though I make my bed in hell, thou art with me. Praise the Lord. If by chance the enemy can drag us into hell, the Lord is right there with us. Praise the Lord. What are you talking about? He never sent nobody nowhere that he didn't go himself. Listen, when Daniel went into the lion's den, he was right there shutting the lion's mouth. When Shadrach, Meshach, Second of Indigo went into the fiery furnace. He was there with the pan, keeping them cool. Praise the Lord. And the psalmist said, Though I make my bed in hell, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Oh, oh, yeah, Richard. Sound good. <coughs> Bless your holy Thank you. Lord, give me strength. Yeah. Having a blast. But he went down and he ended up in prison. And God made prison a happy place to be. <laughs> Wasn't there no time that he yeah. was in charge. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The jailer, the chief jailer, I didn't have to, the, the governor over the jail didn't even have things to, have nothing to worry about. He said, listen, he put everything in, in Joseph's keep and Joseph's care. He left the place. The pay wasn't good, but the Bible said that God blessed him. Praise the Lord forever. But anyways, he was delivered as you Bible readers out of what? Out of the gift that God had given him. The dreams and the interpretation of the dreams. Boys, that ain't a very good thing to run the race on. To some, he made teachers. To some, he made preachers. To some, he made apostles. Whatever God's called you to do, if it's dreaming dreams, do your work and do it good. Yeah. Amen. Yes. That'll never get him nowhere. It's what God wanted him to do. You're right. You're right. You're right. Ain't my cup of tea. I'm glad he called me to preach. Good friend of mine one time, he, he said, you wish you was a prophet? And I said, what? <laughs> he said, you wish you God? I said, Lord, no. He said, you mean to tell me that you wouldn't like to see in the future and be able to predict things? I said, buddy, today still scares me. I don't want to know what tomorrow is. He said, man, I love to do that. I said, not me. And I said, God, finally, I said, God, I better preach before he wants me to do something else. Preaching all used up, and I got to be a prophet or, or a visionary. <laughs> Sound pretty good, but sounds smarter than a preacher, but I preach. Praise the Lord. That dream will never get you nowhere. Boy, it was a gift that God had given him. Lord, yeah, yeah. And God blessed him because of it. he was man enough to use what God had given him. He was there in prison. And uh, for you young Christians, this will encourage you. You young yes. boys up there. Oh, yeah. was read the Bible. Said he was in prison and Pharaoh had got mad at his butler and his baker, the chief butler and chief baker. Lord, yeah. Throwed him in prison. Yep. And Josh, he said, 
Daniel got down there, and uh, or Joseph got down there. They woke up one morning and they dreamed a dream. Yeah. Couldn't nobody in the jailhouse yeah. figure that dream out. Yeah. And so he began to talk to them. And uh, Come on, he interpreted their dreams. Lord, yeah. And he told the butler, he said, now listen, in three days, said, the Pharaoh's going to restore you. Yeah. And said, uh, looked at the baker and he said, in three days, He's going to hang you and the birds of the air is going to eat your flesh. Yeah, yeah. And it happened just like he said. Yeah. Well, Pharaoh had a dream about some king yeah. and about some stocks of corn. Yeah. Buddy, all the paid, all the people on the payroll yeah. couldn't interpret the dream. Yeah. But the butler said, oh, and there was trouble in the kingdom. Yeah. When the king ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Yeah. So finally he got word to Pharaoh and he said, listen, when you was wroth with me and you put me in prison, said me and the baker one morning rose up and we had terrible dreams. There's a man down there, the keeper of the prison, the man that's over the prison, said in charge, said he interpreted our dreams and our dream came to pass right. as he had told us. Yeah. And he said, I believe he might be able to help you. Sure. The Bible said, listen, the Bible said that Pharaoh sent for Joseph, drew him up out of the prison, yep. and brought him in and began to share his dream with him. Yeah. Aren't you glad for the Holy Ghost tonight? Yeah. Aren't you glad for that leader? Yeah. Aren't you glad for that guide? Yeah. Aren't you glad that you got some help on your journey? Yeah. Every time my faith gets weak, all I got to do is look around. When I doubt, when I murmur, when I complain, I just look around and I see that he sent provisions for me and he's made a way where there seemeth to be no way. When I think I can't go another mile, he sent help and he's coming back for me. The writer wrote in Thessalonians that for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the Lord's of the archangel. Joseph was down there. <laughs> About ready to put the roof on. Come on. Joseph was down there. And he come in and he told Pharaoh. He said, Pharaoh, this is the interpretation of the dream. Come on. Come said on. the well uh, king, the padded king that you saw, and said of the seven of the ears of corn that is on the stock. I got in trouble preaching about corn on the stock one time. Yeah. Boy, but I showed my farming experience. I spent a lot of time in the garden, but I didn't enjoy it. And my mind wasn't on it. And therefore, I didn't even, I picked a lot of corn too. But that wasn't where my heart was at. It was down the road to Sweetie. Praise the Lord. But Daddy said, you ain't going with Sweetie till the corn's hoed. And after the corn was hoed and grown, you ain't to be with sweetie till the corn's picked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even realize it. I knew George. Most of the time they wasn't before. <laughs> I tell boy, I thought you picked off of one stock all day long. <laughs> he said that seven ears of corn that is on that stock, those fat ones, yeah. represents seven years of plenty. Yeah. And he said those seven skinny or or, or ill-favored king that you represented, represented and saw it to destroying the fat ones. Said that represents seven years of famine that's coming on the land. My word from you, from God to you, Pharaoh, is that you these first seven years of planting, you need to plow the ground. You need to plant the seed. Yeah. You need to build barns in order to store up. Because the seven years of famine is coming. God bless Joseph. And the word was fulfilled as he spoken. Because he didn't listen to the voice of God. The Bible said that the seven years of planting had ended. 
Now the Bible said, remember that I told you, when Joseph got thrown into the pit, he was 17 years old. Now listen to me. A lot of time to doubt, a lot of time to murmur, a lot of time to question the calling. But Ronnie, listen to me. The Bible records that when Joseph stood before Pharaoh, he was 30 years old. I know I'm dumber than a chicken, but I know one thing. There's 13 years between 17 and 30. Yes, sir, you talk about that. We'll say, well, ain't nobody had it like I've had it. We ain't seen nothing. Why? Because we had it in feeling of the Holy Ghost and the privilege to partake of it to help us. I just took a plastic off his suit again. <laughs> this morning it's got to go back already. It stinketh. <laughs> yes, sir. It ain't been dead four years. Four days. But anyway, he got down there. Pharaoh hearkened to his word. He said, I'm going to make you governor. Yeah. I'm going to put you in charge. Yeah. I'm almost there. Hang on and keep on praying. Right. Got there and said the years of planting, God blessed the land of Pharaoh. And he, uh, he prospered him. Sure. All the barns was full. Yeah. But at the end of seven years of planting, the famine began to take place. Right. Boy, I'll tell you what, there's a day coming. Yeah. The Bible said that man has never witnessed before. Sure. Listen, fa listen. They, they fa fathers turn against sons and sons against fathers. You sure. can find that in Matthew. Yeah. Listen to me. Blood don't mean anything no more. There's people will hold a gun to their daddy's head and take his wallet just to satisfy their needs. Listen, there's boys I saw on the news the other evening. There, there was a boy that beat his mother up and robbed her. Why? It don't mean nothing because as the Bible said, the love of many has waxed worse. We don't have to wait for that to be fulfilled. We're living in that day today. But church, I'm glad that God allowed me to look out and see the wagon that he sent out. Yeah. Holy comforter, you're right. The Bible said that famine began to take place in Egypt. Yes. And all the surrounding lands. Oh, yeah. Boys, the corn began to get scarce. Yeah. And people began right. to wonder where, what in the world they was going to do. Right. Folks said, I'm going to make it. We ain't seen hard times yet. No, no. Folks said, it can't get no worse. You ain't oh, seen nothing yet. Right. We better pray. The Bible said yeah. that our flight be not right. in the winter. Oh, Praise oh, the Lord forever. Yeah. And said, woe unto them that give such. As I was talking, I'll not embarrass them. Listen to me. I was telling John and Alyssa as I was talking to them. And I wouldn't use them if I wasn't afraid to. If I was afraid that they would get offended, I said, we've got a responsibility when God blesses us with a child. Boy, i tell you what, it's not about us no more. No, sir, it's not about us and it's our, desi our desires. It's our children comes first. Yes, sir, it's our duty that God has placed upon us. Why in the world do you think that God sent his only son to the cross of Calvary? It wasn't his good pleasure, but he knew that we had to come first. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's good preaching, Lee. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm doing this. The Bible said that Joseph got down there. And on this certain day, there was people coming from all over. Yeah. Buying corn Amen. off a of paper. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord forever. Yeah. We're just about on shouting on. ground. Yeah. The Bible said that there was one day that there was ten old boys come up oh. from another country and from another land. Listen to me. Boy, I tell you what. Most people, it's a good thing that Joseph had the love of God in him. It's a good thing that Joseph wasn't focused on his personal feelings. But boy, he was out to please God Almighty. Why? Because God was going to use Joseph to bless his whole kindred. Yes, sir. There was ten boys come down from the land. Listen Got Hebrew boys to come down to buy corn off of the old Pharaoh. Yeah, 
before nobody wanted nothing to do with him. Nobody wanted no dealings with him. But Pharaoh was the only one that had corn in all the land. And the Bible said when these Hebrews come down there that Joseph didn't want to blow his identity. The Bible said that Joseph even used an interpreter. Yeah, they'd come in. Joseph had an interpreter there. And the folks that wanted to buy corn would talk to the to the interpreter and say, well, we'd like to buy three bushel of corn. They'd turn around, they'd look at Joseph, and they'd go, look, 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 how do you speak that language? And uh, he'd, he'd say, look, 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 and get the interpreter would look at the Hebrews, said, what'd he say? Said it'd be $3.50 a bushel. Well, that's too much. They would go back over and say, hooga, booga, booga, booga. He said, hooga, booga, booga. It don't matter to me. And said, what did he say? said, it don't matter. You either pay it or starve to death. Amen. 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 You're right. Bible don't say that. <laughs> Wait till you get to heaven talk to Joseph. He yes. might have said the very words. Amen. You're right. Anyway, ten boys. I heard Chase back there. One of those boys understood that. <laughs> every word. What do you hear? <laughs> His brother come down there and the Bible oh, said that Joseph recognized him. Oh, yeah. Recognized him. They didn't recognize him. My goodness gracious. All they to know, listen, they to know, they say, ain't no need us going down there trying to get him. Amen. Bobby's in charge. Yeah. Ain't nothing he'd He's rather do. See us start to death. Ain't nothing. He lot will throw us in a pit. Right. I don't believe that. You read the Bible. Yeah. The Bible said after he found out, they found out who he was. Said, oh, yeah, yeah. the blood of our brother is going to be required upon us. Yeah. So, right. Well, what happened to that coat of many colors? Yeah, These on. girls that's paying so close attention, when they took that coat of many collars off of him, they went and killed a goat. Yeah, put the blood on. And they dipped the coat in blood. Yeah. Took it back to their daddy. Yeah. Showed their daddy and said, Bubba got killed. Yeah. They didn't tell him that they'd sold their brother. Nope. Said Bubby got killed. Right. And her daddy wept all these years. Yeah. Joseph was now, listen to me, Joseph was now 39 years old. That's a long time. 39 and 17, that's 19 and 3, that's 24 years, right? Yeah. Come on, 20? 22, Ronnie? 22 years. Math wasn't well, I've done good math, but they left that right leg off of it. <laughs> You'll understand it later. But anyways, 22 years later, still nobody believed him. The Bible said that after a while, he was made known. He sold his brethren 10 sacks of corn at least because everybody had a sack. They got back home and they found out that the money, the $3.50 that they paid for the sack of corn, how much was it? I don't know how much it was and it really don't matter. Some people would spend, Lord, our government spends millions on the life of a crow. Yeah. Sure does. And we've got people starving to death. Yeah. But anyways, we won't dwell there. The important thing is that Jesus Christ is our only form of salvation. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Let me hurry. I'm just about finished. Oh. Bible said that they found uh, money in the sack. They kept, Joseph kept their brethren. Yeah. They kept him there and wouldn't let him go back. They went back home. Told daddy, said, listen, said he, he kept our brethren. He had even put them in jail for a period of time. After the corn was gone, they had to go back. Yeah. And Jacob told told the boys, he said, you've got to go back to Egypt and buy some more corn. He said, Dad, we can't go back unless we take Bubby, Benjamin, the new new, new child yeah. that was born yeah. after Joseph. Yeah, yeah. He said, we've got to take Benjamin back with us. And Jacob said, you can't take Benjamin back. He said, I've done lost one son. Abel told him. And as Joseph began to question his brothers, he accused them of being spies, knowing better. He asked him about his family. He was so anxious to hear about dad and mom. Right. He said, have you got any more brother? And they said, yeah, we've got a little baby brother at home. So dad wouldn't let us bring him. 
He says, that all said, well, we had another brother, but he's not. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. And, and, and I know conviction tore him up. But said, in order for us to get corn again, said, the man down there in Pharaoh's house, Pharaoh's governor, said we had to bring Benjamin with us. And finally, Jacob agreed to it, and he took him down there. Make a long story short, Joseph had made himself known to his brethren. He sent everybody out of the house. He said, boys, he began to weep over. Yeah. Well, that's the heart of God. Yeah, and yeah. No wonder the Bible said, love your enemies. Yeah. Oh, bless the Lord forever. Yeah. It's hard to do, ain't it? Yeah. But I can see right now, I can see Lee, and he put, uh, uh, as he grabbed no issue, one of the older ones that was in charge, get back up here just a minute. We'll get you a little step up here, but it's all right. I can see him now. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure the old enemy tried to take him back 22 years. Yeah. Back to that pit that day. Yeah. And remind him, say, he didn't care about no, you then. Right. Oh, but the Bible said he fell on his neck. Yes, I ain't going to get you all sweaty. Yes. But he fell on his neck oh, and he yes. went over it. Yes, then yes. he went down, Ronnie, to the yes. next one. Then yes. to the next one. Yes. Then yes. to the next one. Right. And he cried. He wept over all of them. You can yes. sit down now. Right. But anyway, the Bible said that that finally he had to reveal his identity. Yeah. And he said, listen, the word went all over Egypt. How that Joseph's brethren had came. All of those Hebrews had come. And they was Joseph's brethren. They was ten of them. Well, eleven of them. Oh, everybody was happy. Finally, Pharaoh, listen, Pharaoh got word that Joseph's brethren had come. And Joseph and Pharaoh loved Joseph so much that he not only wanted to oh, listen to the church, listen, we can get a relationship with God. God's blessings won't only run it, won't only flow on us, but it'll overflow on our bless the Lord. It'll overflow on our seed. Praise the Lord. I believe a dog and a cat can't even be blessed if we bless the Lord with everything that's in Yes. Just about to wrap it up. Come on. Come on. Let's go back to St. John for just a minute. <coughs> Chapter 14. I want you to listen close. Verse 16. Jesus talking to the people here. He said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you for how long? Forever. Forever. He said, I gotta leave you. Yep. He said, even the spirit of truth, and get this, whom the world cannot receive. Yeah. Because it seeth him not. Yeah. Neither knoweth him. Oh, yeah. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. In you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye shall see me. <laughs> because what? I live. I live. Yeah. Ye shall live also. Oh, yeah. Now let's go back to Genesis if you would. Chapter 45. The Bible said, said that Pharaoh told Joseph. He said, Joseph. He said, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye. Lay your beast and go. Get you into the land of Canaan. Now listen to me. It was quite a journey from Canaan to Egypt. For a young man, it took strength and perseverance. For an old man, it was not possible. Do you get what I'm trying to tell yeah. you tonight? Church, we can't make the journey no. unless the king sends for us. Yeah. Unless the king makes provisions oh. for us. And the king has already done that. He said, I'll not leave, the, leave you comfortless, but I pray the father. And he said, take your father, your households, and come unto me. Yeah. And I will give you the good of the land of Egypt. And ye shall eat of the fat of the land. Now, verse 19, thou art commanded, this do you. 
Take your wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives and bring your father and come. Let's go over to verse 25. They went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan to Jacob, their father, and told him Joseph is yet alive. And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe that he was alive. Couldn't believe either that the Lord, that no way could he be governor in Egypt. They just said, Daddy, he's down in the far lands of Canaan. He's a leader down there. He might have believed that. But there ain't no way. The Bible said his heart fainted. More or less, he had a heart attack. Yeah. Oh, church. Boy, the Word of God said, without a vision, we'll perish. Yeah. If we don't open our eyes and look, we ain't going to make it. Yeah. But the Bible said in verse 26, and said, and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. They told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. When he saw, listen to me. When he saw the wagons, listen to me. He said when he saw the wagons, which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of, their, of, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Praise the Lord forever. But I tell you what, when we see the Holy Ghost in the midst, when we see the presence of God, it will revive our spirit and renew our faith. I'm glad you listen to me. I'm glad that I've seen the wagon, aren't you? I'm glad I looked outside and I saw the wagon that God sent after me. That's my message tonight. I'm glad I saw the wagon. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad I got on the wagon. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we're thankful, Lord, for the Comforter. Thankful for the Holy Ghost. Thankful, Lord, that we saw the wagon. And, Lord, that was sign and proof to us. And it re rekindled our faith and renewed our spirit. Father, I ask you tonight, Lord, Father, if there's one under the sound of my voice, Lord, that needs your spirit rekindled and the fire brought back in their life. Lord, help them to look out and see the wagon. Father, help them to see, Lord, that they, that'll encourage them, Lord. That'll encourage them and that will give them encouragement if they'll have faith in you yeah. and trust your spirit. Oh, thank you. you said you wouldn't leave, it com leave us comfortless. You said you would, we wouldn't have to make the journey by ourselves. But you would send a comforter that would lead us and guide us and carry us over life's journey. As Pharaoh told Joseph, said, send a wagon after daddy. Lord, that blessed me today. I'm glad you sent a wagon after me. I'm too weak to make the journey, Lord. My strength, Lord, that I've got myself. Lord, I'm not able to walk the walk. But Father, you sent this poor man a, a wagon. You sent me a ride, Lord. Somebody, Lord, to carry me over. And I thank you for that. So, Lord, you know the need of the church. I don't. But I do know one thing, Lord. You didn't give me this message for no reason or no avail. You said your word would not return into your void, but it would accomplish that which it was sent forth to do. I ask you tonight to help us, Lord, to act upon the message that you've sent us. Lord, when our faith gets weak and when we begin to doubt what others say, we look out, Lord. See the way. That's a ride for the journey, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, as old saints used to say. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name forever. We love you and we praise you. It's in your name we pray. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. As a church would stand, and the church sings,
Lord, tonight every head bowed and every eye closed. You're here tonight, you say, Preacher, I'm lost. I'd love to be saved. I'd love to be a Christian. But I can't do it. I agree with you. You can't do it. But if you'll repent, allow Jesus Christ to apply His blood to your heart and your life and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What's that do? That cleans your vessel. Making a place fit for His Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to come to live and abide in you. Then you can make it. Because as the Word teaches us, without His Spirit, we're none of His. We can't make it without the Comforter. And I ask you that you would have faith enough to look out, see the wagon. He'll carry you through if you allow Him to. But it's up to you to receive. Jacob couldn't have made the journey by himself and in his own strength. But he had to get on the wagon. You're going to have to get on the wagon tonight. You're going, to allow, you're going to have to allow God to do the work because you can't do it yourself. You need to pray before it's eternally too late. You need to pray. Bless the name of the Lord forever. One more time as Clifford comes. Ha!